If you were paying attention to the news midweek, you may have heard Nissan announce its brand new 2018 Leaf electric car would come with a user-selectable feature called e-pedal that would make it possible to use just the accelerator pedal to both speed up and slow down the car. Those unfamiliar with electric car technology may have worried that this was meaning Nissan was considering departing from decades of car pedal norms and launch a vehicle with just a single pedal. But as those familiar with the world of plug-in cars will tell you, Nissan's e-pedal functionality is better known as one-pedal driving, and it's been available in select electric cars for a really long time. So what is one-pedal driving? What's its function? And why are hardened electric car fans getting super excited about it making an appearance in the 2018 LEAF? Well, in order to answer that question, I first have to cover some basics of electric car operation, specifically explaining regenerative braking. When you're driving an electric car, you're sending power from the car's battery pack to a motor or motors attached to the wheels. That's normally through something called an inverter, or in the case of older electric cars, a controller, which turns the battery's power into the correct form of power needed to cause the car's motors to spin, which then turns electrical energy into kinetic energy, or movement, thanks to the wonders of electromagnets. The process itself is a little more complicated, but for reasons of time, I've simplified it quite a bit here. Regen braking works by switching that process the other way around, turning the motor into a generator to turn the wheel's kinetic energy back into electrical energy that can be stored in the car's battery pack, a process which also slows the car down since energy is being converted from one form to another. In most modern electric cars, regenerative braking is activated when you lift off the accelerator pedal. It's often programmed by default to mimic the reasonably slow vehicle retardation that you'd get due to engine braking if you lifted off the accelerator in an internal combustion engine vehicle, but it can be a lot stronger or a lot weaker. In the last 20 years or so, regen braking has become standard for most electric cars, but the implementation of the system has always been a little different between car companies. Some have stuck to mimicking engine braking on throttle liftoff, so as not to confuse drivers, while others have gone further, offering drivers a choice of different regen strengths through paddle shifters on the steering wheel, on-screen customization settings, or specific gear modes. Some cars even allow users to switch off regeneration altogether, letting the car coast on accelerator liftoff instead, since it's actually more energy efficient to not constantly change between kinetic and electrical energy all the time. The GM EV1, for example, had a special coast switch to let drivers coast when desired, maximizing range and charge. It also happened to be the first commercial car to use regenerative braking, but I digress. So back to the topic at hand. Most cars with regenerative braking will slow down a reasonable amount on accelerator liftoff, but still require the use of the brake pedal to bring them to a complete standstill. Cars with one pedal functionality have regenerative braking that's so powerful the car can actually be gradually and controllably brought to a complete halt on just accelerator liftoff, relegating the actual brake pedal to emergency use and keeping holding the car still after it's already stopped. One pedal driving was made popular by the original Tesla Roadster, as well as the limited production Mini E prototypes made by BMW way back in 2009. Today, both the Tesla Model S and Model X have options to enable slightly less aggressive than the Roadster, but single pedal driving. So too does the BMW i3. Meanwhile, the Chevrolet Volt and Chevrolet Bolt EV have switches on the steering wheel that can enable regeneration on demand for a quasi single pedal driving experience without touching the brake pedal. Nissan's e-pedal switch, meanwhile, will allow customers to choose between the standard level of accelerator liftoff you'd find in today's Leaf, which itself does depend on drive mode that you've selected, and a far higher level of regenerative braking on liftoff. When engaged, it allows you to accelerate and slow down using just the accelerator pedal, which takes me to explaining why people are excited. While it might seem like it's a weird concept to get used to, single pedal driving is particularly useful in slow moving traffic, and it can also be great fun to use on twisty hilly roads where you'd be traditionally be jumping between brake and accelerator. Since your right foot can stay on one pedal all the time, single pedal driving results in a more engaging, controllable, and exciting driving experience. 
If you haven't yet had a go, try and get in one of those cars I've mentioned with single pedal driving capabilities, and you'll see why EV drivers love it so much. That's it. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bar and click the Patreon link at the end of the video if you want to help me make more of these videos. Until next time, keep evolving. Bye.